esteemed colleagues, dear friends, thank you very much, especially Renata, for inviting the European Dyslexia Association to contribute to this final conference of a Dyslexia project founded by the European Commission in the area of ICT under the FP7 program. We, the European individuals with dyslexia, need initiatives and projects like yours, as a large number of European countries is failing to support effectively the integration of persons affected with dyslexia and related specific learning disabilities, or even ignore the problem completely. As elementary, primary, secondary, tertiary education and vocational training, formal or informal, are still in the responsibility and legislation and execution of every single EU country, any activity regarding literacy provided and founded by a supranational body is a move forward for this large percentage of European citizens. Our hope is that the European Union's institution become in future a competent legislative and executive center for a common European policy regarding dyslexia and related learning difficulties. Your work is very common, as, as far as I know, it's, it's, it works very successful with this issue. I feel accepted, not as an object, and this is very important for us people, individuals with dyslexia. So your work is one of the steps to this goal, to a supranational, let's say, European kind of policy regarding dyslexia. Allow me first to express strongly my gratitude towards the literacy team, recognized researchers in dyslexia and IT specialists, having done this approach towards those European <coughs> citizens experiencing serious difficulties acquiring and using written language. Your extensive and impressive final product will be of big importance for us. Research findings indicate that at least 45 million individuals in Europe are dyslexic and may face, therefore, impaired access to education, work, and social integration. Dyslexia is a difference which makes the acquisition and use of reading, spelling, and writing skills difficult. This difference is neurological in origin. The cognitive difficulties which are underlying this difference can also affect organizational skill, calculation abilities, and other cognitive skills. The sense of frustration experienced by those affected can also <coughs> lead to secondary behavioral and emotional symptoms. Dyslexia may be caused by a combination of problems of phonological processing, working memory, rapid naming, sequencing, and the automaticity of basic skills. Researchers acknowledge that there are many possible causes for dyslexia, including genetics. It is important to state that there is no relationship between a person's level of intelligence, individual effort, or socioeconomic status, and the presence of dyslexia. Despite increasingly better legislation and policy supporting equal opportunities in some, in some European countries, many individuals with dyslexia experience that the educational and vocational system doesn't identify and meet their needs and employers who are richer than us. 
The European Dyslexia Association is a European umbrella organization for national and regional associations of persons with dyslexia, children's parents, and professionals. Since it was founded in Brussels in 1987, <coughs> As an international non-profit association, it has developed as a European platform and the voice of the people with dyslexia and other specific learning differences such as dysphasia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, or attention deficit disorder. Children's parents, professionals, and researchers alike in Europe. The EDA currently has 42 member organizations in 22 EU countries, plus Norway and Switzerland. The EDA is an official relation with UNESCO. It is a member of the European Disability Forum and has consulted status at the International Federation of Library Associations. The EDA insists that every child, adolescent, and adult with dyslexia has the right to access and to receive appropriate education, identification, support, and opportunities to achieve their full potential in education, vocational training, employment, and all aspects of life. <coughs> One of the main aims is to inform people, politicians, unions, executives, and opinion leaders in Europe about the necessity of supporting those who are individuals with these differences in a positive way in order to avoid negative consequences caused by inappropriate education and training, low self-esteem, and underachievement leading to social exclusion. More than a century of research has enabled us to increase the understanding <coughs> of how humans acquire and use basic cultural techniques like verbal communication, mathematical understanding, language and literacy skills, including reading, spelling and writing, <coughs> with and without control of activity. And why this, this people find these processes difficult to access, to acquire, and to use. Despite that, the mentioned learning differences still present concerns and challenge for many millions of children, adolescents, and adults across Europe. These challenges require major changes from governments, policy makers, and organizations to improve attitudes, legislation, and positive practice. Furthermore, across Europe, the diversity of languages and the multilingual demands, social and cultural backgrounds, as well as educational differences, have a significant impact <coughs> on the manifestations of difficulties and life changes of persons with this. Maybe you have noticed that the additional name to the EDA is International Organization for Specific Learning. So we represent as well European citizens with SLD. This is not surprising as voting academic surveys, the same person could accumulate different comorbid this differences. So 50 persons with dyslexia are dyspractic as well. 50% of persons with dyspraxia are either dyslexic or are having differences in attention. 85 of persons with dysphasia are dyslexic as well. 20% of persons with dyslexia are having differences in attention with or without hyperactivity. 50% of hyperactivity, hyperactive children are dyslexic as well. This, this differences which badly impair communication from a very early stage are neglected in many, many stages. 
Therefore, <coughs> it is the duty of the European institutions to prevent resultant discrimination against affected children, adolescents, and adults. A European frame is needed to give them specific, early, intensive, and multidisciplinary teaching and remediation in appropriate structures, preferably inclusively in mainstream environments with extensive, appropriate, specific <coughs> support. We are demanding the Commission and the European Institution of the Parliament to act and to oblige the member states to include in their legislation a disappropriated teacher basic and advanced trainings for all teachers, including those in the kindergarten. To oblige the member states to take timely steps to spot, screen, systematically diagnose, assess, and provide professional follow-up for these differences from an early stage age model. To oblige the member states to design effective and inclusive multidisciplinary pedagogical <coughs> further educational social structures for young children, adolescents, and adults to achieve their full potential in education, training, employment in all aspects of life. We ask them to make early identification of, this, of dyslexia across Europe. The <coughs> lifelong learning opportunities are <coughs> reality and to challenge the current discriminatory dispractice of many employees. The vision of the EDA is to ensure that every European child, adolescent and adult, with dysphasia, dyspraxia, dyslexia, dyscalculia, or attention deficit disorder, and so on, has a right to access and to receive appropriate identification, support, and opportunity to achieve their full potential in education, training, employment, and other aspects of life. To deepen your understanding of EDA's contribution to literacy, allow me to present you some of these recent activities. Since 2003, the EDA organizes every third year its old European Dyslexia Conference with prominent keynote speakers, lecturers, and workshop leaders to provide updated academic knowledge to present best practice models in the professionals and teachers field, giving affected <coughs> persons and their families a voice, serious information, and the possibility to express their needs. Maybe you are aware that FIDA has organized in cooperation with uh, Linnaeus University in Vexia, Sweden, after Budapest, Luxembourg, and Bruges, its fourth all European dyslexia conference in September 2013. I'm delighted to report to you that uh, it was in content, output, and organization a big success, hosting 450 attendants from all over the world. I'm delighted as well that, to inform you that the fifth all European Lexia conference will be held in Modena, Italy from 21st to 24th of September 2016 in cooperation with the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia. I kindly invite you to forward abstracts and to contribute to it. And for the fifth time, the European Dyslexia Association in cooperation with the University of San Marino organizes the EDA summer seminar, which will be held <coughs> from 18 to 20th of June 2015. The summer seminar's purpose is to exchange research, practice, and experience. <coughs> the skills theme is dyslexia in different perspectives. Confirmed <coughs> keynote speakers are Karin Landl from Austria, 
John Stein and Rod Nicholson from UK. If you believe, if you intend to deliver your presentation there, now it's the time to submit. Please, not later than the March. With our project European Dyslexic Youth come together, we invite youth with dyslexia from all over Europe to come together for the second time in Würzburg, Bavaria, from 18th to 25th of July 2015. We want to give them the possibility to improve their knowledge of English and give them confidence in speaking English to others. The students can feel comfortable sharing their experiences with each other and a supporting setting. The participant students also get to spend time with other youths with dyslexia and get the chance to make international friends. In the coming years, the EDA plans to continue this project in other member countries in 2016, most probably in Sweden. You will find or you find more details about these events on our new website www.edainfo.eu uh, where you can also subscribe to our newsletter. On the EU level, the EDA took part in some EU granted projects. The recent one, you all pointed <coughs> to the education of teachers and professionals working with individuals with dyslexia, providing an online tool to assess a person's competences in this field. Another major result is the development of the European guidance criteria for the education and professionals working with persons with dyslexia, produced in coordination with its member organizations and edited by the DDA's British Dyslexia Association's head of education, Katharina Kotre, Oliver Weiss from the Austrian Federal Dyslexia Association, and me. It provides a, a harmonized European curriculum in this field, in English and in German. Another EDA's task on EU level was the long struggle for a treaty on copyright for the visual impaired, print disabled, and person with dyslexia, which was signed in Marrakesh on 26th of June 2013, with more than 600 delegates at the UN World Intellectual Property Organization. This was the first intellectual property treaty benefiting the public interest rather than the interest of the right holders and closed nearly five, yearly, five years of hard negotiations by the World Blind Union, the European Blind Union and the European Dyslexia Association. Until then, copyright law was a national jurisdiction which has the effect of preventing blind, reading, disabled, and dyslexia organizations from sharing books with neighboring countries, thus considering unnecessary duplication of production of books in accessible form, <coughs> like Braille, audiobooks, large print, or daisy readers. With this the support of the chairman of the disability group of the European Parliament, Mr. Adam Kosher, the EDA organized, organized successful in October 2014 a seminar about dyslexia and SLD in the European Parliament, which attracted some NEPs and many staff of the Commission. Since uh, the new EU Commission came into power last year, we have tried to contact the new Commissioner of Education, Youth and Culture, <coughs> Mr. Ilmar Navracic, asking for a meeting with him to discuss actions on European level. Until now, we didn't receive a reply, but we are patient that he will be in the Commission for another three and a half years, so we got time. Complicating uh, the lobby work of the EDA in Brussels is the fact that all board directors of the EDA are volunteers who do their duty 
for the EDA in their spare time. They do not receive any compensation for their work in the EDA. Their travel and accommodation costs are covered by their nominating association. Furthermore, travel and accommodation in Brussels in week time is very, very expensive. So that's our troubles to get in contact uh, with, with uh, EU institutions. We even don't have a secretary, we were a secretary. We just had 10 desks at home, and that's our office. But may I turn your attention to what the EDA can do in favor or in cooperation with your, of your project. The EDA will soon open the project web pages www.dyslexiaprojects.eu <coughs> or open to all European projects regarding dyslexia and specific learning disabilities. The aim is to disseminate information about the project to a wide audience and spread good practice. Mm -hmm. This website will therefore become an important source of information about this life in the international context and a point of reference for those wishing to access and build upon existing and previous project work. Postings during the life of the project <coughs> is free, space on the website is, will be limited to a description of the main project aims, outcomes and useful information, but links can be given to the project homepage for further information. There is a fee of 250 euros for the con continued posting of the information after the end of a project as a means of dissemination. This covers a period of five years after the end of the project. Project leaders may <laughs> wish to build this cost into their project planning as an excellent way to ensure continued and wide dissemination of results. Secondly, in case of you, if you are intending following up the literacy project, as far as we here, the EDA would be interested to become a partner. We can offer a wide range of possibilities of dissemination and, of course, the diverse professional assets of, our, of its board directors. But let's go back a little bit to literacy. Traditionally, literacy is the ability to use written language actively and passively. One definition of literacy is the ability to read, write, spell, listen and speak. I'm quoting Wikipedia now. Uh, in the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary of Current English, New Edition, 1974, five which I have found in my bibliotheque. I found the description of literacy as ability to read and to write. Done. But today's uh, position points that, literally, uh, that literacy always exists in a context, in conjunction with the values associated with the context. Personally, I prefer following definition. Literacy <coughs> represents the lifelong intellectual process of gaining meaning from a critical interpretation of written or printed representation or symbol. So it's not only written language. Remember there is something like body literacy and other things like that. So Today you find in the literature many sorts of literacy. I am really astonished how many literacies exist in the world. Multimedia literacy, computer literacy, information literacy, technological literacy, functional literacy, critical literacy, rhetorical literacy, literacy. arts literacy, visual literacy, ecological literacy, health literacy, statistical literacy. Uh, a big field, yes, and so on. But they should never disregard 
that the basic prerequisite to all these literacies is learning to identify symbols, the ability <coughs> to understand spoken words and to code written words. Without a wide range of complex language underpinning knowledge about phonology, orthography, syntax, morphology, and semantics, literacy in our sense cannot develop. This is why the EDA concentrates in its parts fighting for literacy on early recognition, best model in formal elementary and primary education and intervention, and the education of teachers and professionals working with persons with dyslexia and SLD. As for several reasons, your project is pointing primarily affected adolescents and adults. It seems that you and your aim and our aim, tasks and visions, complement to each other. So let me, as representative of a European individual with dyslexia and comorbid specific learning disabilities, thank you again for your work, which is done for us and maybe in future with us, and which will be of important impact for us. Thank you. Thank you, team. Thank you so much, Mr. President. <coughs> and um, now let's go through the... <laughs> I used that before, but I feel like both sides. I was so excited um, to hear your speech that I did not start moderating any questions after Bratislav's in my presentation. But maybe now we have finished such a bigger slot. If you have anything you want to ask, um, please do it. Uh. Could you be a little bit more specific on the cooperation between your organization and eventually literacy uh, portal, which is going to be alive for many years, I hope, yeah? Uh, yes, but as I have told you before, we are all uh, people working in our business, working in our jobs, and we do all in our time off all the work for VDA. So they are very, very restricted. So mostly, if they work, they work on weekends. To, from, they have our meetings normally from Friday afternoon to Sunday morning, and that's it. Because in my job, I'm a speech therapist, educational speech therapist. I can't leave my kids. Uh, I have to do my job, and that's uh, with all of us. Uh, but on the other hand, it's because they are not uh, professional, professional, uh, officials, let's say it like that, which, uh, which, uh, which tasks is to sit, to, to go to Brussels, to sit in, in meetings in the week time, in their work time. It's, it's an advantage because we all, all the board, they're coming from different positions, from different, uh, experiences and, and this makes this uh, important. But coming back to your wish to, for co cooperation. What I saw, what you did here, and I know some of, I know Renata, I know Eva, uh, I know they are all excellent researchers in uh, this way, and the others I hope I will know near in the next time. I, uh, I have the impression they're really compliment to each other with your knowledge, with your business knowledge, with your academic knowledge, with our knowledge as this like Of course you should do that. But please see the possible restrictions. No time, <laughs> no money, <laughs> no office. <laughs> I better tell you, I like to travel. <laughs> but we can talk about okay. it later. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you very much. What I really like 
just maybe a brief comment. What I really like is, um, first of all, I feel deep respect for volunteering to do all this work in your in your free time. That's really a lot what you accomplished. And also thank you for the brochures you brought, you brought last time. I put some out there so people can have a look on these guidelines for the curriculum. Yeah. yeah, and what I also want to emphasize, what I really like, is that you organize these events for the dyslexic people. Something I missed a little bit from the very beginning is that you concentrate all the energy on the portal. It has to everything to be online. Because my heart goes always into blended communication, like the portal as supplement, but really needing the people. So we brought that dimension in through the human-centered design. But maybe if there is another project or if there is more, it would be very nice to connect the, the real experience with the people, show them, for example, the portal, initiate encounters and contacts, and then a lot more could go on on the, on the online medium, I think. Yes, uh, and uh, I cannot, officially, I cannot offer you uh, the connections to our member organizations because they are a democratic body and I depend on the decisions of my board. But at the next board meeting I will present your work and I will ask the board if we could endorse it in the sense of, and give it uh, and send it to our members. I mean, 42 organizations, some of them are, are very small, of course, like five activists, but some of them are 8,000 people, like the German Bundesverband Legislative <laughs> or yeah. British Flex yeah. Association. So just, I will do that. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> and perhaps let's hope also for the School of Education that we somehow cooperate, that's, that's, that's cooperate that's together. That's what I wanted to do because the School of Education yeah. here, you are for the secondary school, I'm yes. 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 Yes, but the problem is deeper. I mean, but the problem starts as yeah. well. elementary education. Yes. And but it doesn't go away by high school. Yeah. No, but, but yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. No, 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 no. But I think we have to concentrate a lot. <coughs> I mean, you're doing a job on, on, on secondary level, but we have to do this job on a primary level and elementary level. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I do. I work um, on, the, on the University College for Pedagogics so in this yeah. field. But yeah, what, well, you're right, teachers, <coughs> and that teachers no, primary know. teachers, don't know anything about this. Yeah, and secondary level teachers don't know either, so we have to get both. So I have to Thank do something. You. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you.